Hi students, in this video, we are going to learn more about the group zero elements in the periodic table. So this particular lesson is going to be pretty short because um, as we have mentioned, group zero elements, they are unreactive. So in that sense, uh, they actually don't really undergo any interesting chemical reactions at all. All right, so it's going to be really short. Okay, so the elements in group zero of the periodic table, they are called the noble gases. Um, they, in terms of reactivity, they are, we call them, they are inert. Okay, inert is just another fancy term that means unreactive. Okay, um, then in terms of physical properties of the noble gases, the first one would be that they are monoatomic. Okay, mono meaning one. Okay, so um, because they are unreactive, uh, and also they have the stable electronic configuration, right? So noble gases, they are very happy to be in the atomic states. Okay, so they do not lose, gain or share any electrons to, uh, to, to form compounds. So they remain as atoms. Okay, so monoatomic one. Second physical property of noble gases is that um, they are colorless gases at room temperature and pressure. Okay, so meaning at uh, 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. Thirdly, they have low melting and boiling points. So this one you can think about it as, um, let's say, for instance, helium, right? Uh, helium is a gas that we are all familiar with. Uh, helium gas is used to fill balloons, right? Let's say you're going to have a party, you want to have balloons that float, uh, are floating around. Uh, usually, it is filled with helium gas, right? Because helium gas... Uh, has a very low mass. Um, so helium gas compared to the gases that are in the air, uh, it is very light. That's why your helium balloons float in the air. Okay, so you can think about helium gas uh, and you should be able to relate this, right? They are colorless gases uh, at room temperature and pressure and then um, it is also caused by a low melting and boiling point. That's why it can be a gas at 25 degrees Celsius. Then, fourthly, uh, noble gases are also insoluble in water, so it doesn't dissolve in water. Okay, moving on, let's look at the chemical properties of noble gases. So, noble gases are unreactive, so they do not undergo any chemical reactions. Um, so, yeah, so that's really about it. But uh, the important part here really is to make sure that you understand the reason as well as explanation behind why uh, they are unreactive. Okay, so basically it's because noble gases, they have the stable duplet or octet electronic configuration as we have mentioned many times during chemical bonding. Uh, so again, a reminder that duplet is uh, applicable for helium only because helium has an electronic configuration of two. Whereas the other elements, such as from neon and onwards, okay, they all have octet, meaning they have uh, eight valence electrons. So as a result of that, the noble gases do not lose, do not gain, neither do they share electrons in order to form compounds. Okay, so this uh, part is important because it again closely links to chemical bonding, right? So again, a quick reminder and recap. If the atoms lose or gain electrons, uh, then ionic bonding is involved and ionic bondings are formed. Okay, and then thereby you will form ionic compounds. Whereas when you share electrons, or rather when the atoms share electrons in order to form the stable duplet or octet electronic configuration, covalent bonding is involved, covalent bonds are formed, and your compound that is being formed in the end, they are called covalent compounds. Last but not least, let's talk about the uses of noble gases. So even though we say that noble gases are unreactive and in a way they are a bit boring if you speak in terms of uh, the number of chemical reactions that they can go through, which is zero, okay, um, they are actually still interesting in the sense that they uh, because of that unreactivity they are able to provide an inert atmosphere which is important in uh, a lot of circumstances in real life where you don't want the surroundings or the atmosphere to be 
um, reactive such that it will maybe say pose some danger to uh, to whatever process that is happening at that place okay so noble gases are still very much uh, highly sought after and, and has good users lah, okay and so this part you need to remember some of the common users for um, some of the noble gases so firstly helium it is used for filling weather or um, advertisement balloons as well as airships because it's very light, right? Uh, it has a very low relative atomic mass, so uh, it's good for those purposes. Uh, neon gas, we should be quite familiar also. Neon is used in making lights and advertising signs. So, for instance, like you go to uh, some... Uh, uh, entertainment centers for instance at night you might see those fancy colorful neon lights right those are filled with neon gas and then there's some uh, chemical reaction going on and then uh, uh, you will get to see the colored lights it's just like those neon light stick correct it usually comes in uh, for example those light sticks uh, you are required to break the capsule first uh, let the chemical reaction happen uh, by mixing the chemicals, um, then you'll produce the lights. Okay, so for more information on that, feel free to just search for a YouTube video and you can have a look at that. And then finally, argon. Uh, it is used to fill tungsten bulbs because it provides, again, uh, an inert atmosphere that prevents the oxidation of the filament. So the filament of the bulb is the uh, metal component, right? So uh, under normal circumstances, if you just leave it in air, okay, which has oxygen, then oxidation can happen. Okay, so if you give it a inert atmosphere filled with argon, then that process is uh, heavily uh, reduced. Okay, uh, or rather, it's prevented. Lah, okay, Ox prevents oxidation. And then uh, just one more, argon is also used to provide an inert atmosphere for certain processes, such as the welding of stainless steel. Okay, so this is the end of uh, group zero elements. Uh, likewise, it is also the end of uh, our topic on periodic table. So uh, just a quick roundup of what we have done so far. In this chapter, we have seen the features of the periodic table. Uh, we have also looked at periodic trends, specifically uh, for group one group 7 as well as uh, group 0 elements. Okay, so that's it. Hope that you have enjoyed your learning. I will see you in the next video. Bye!